Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict 4 of 2019 amending a number of provisions of the Executive Regulations List of the Real Estate Registration Law issued under Law 13 of 2013. Article 1 of the edict stipulates that Article 2 and 63 of Law 13 of 2013 will be replaced with the following. Article 2 stipulates that the Department of Real Estate Survey will conduct the initial survey the borders of the real estate and issue survey certificates after their accreditation by the department. Article 63 stipulates that the registration application should have all the papers and documentations that support the data attached to it. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Under Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs of Italy, Guglielmo Picchi, at Rifah Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Italian Under Secretary discussed a number of strategic issues and areas of shared interests and highlighted the important role such bilateral visits play in enhancing cooperation between the two countries. His Royal Highness welcomed the visit of the Italian under secretary and praised joint efforts aiming to strengthen economic and commercial cooperation between Bahrain and Italy. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince went on to emphasize Bahrain's commitment to continue working alongside its regional and international partners to advance shared strategic interests. The Italian Under Secretary expressed pleasure at the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and noted the importance of exploring new avenues of collaboration between Italy and Bahrain. The meeting also was also attended by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Muhammad Al Khalifa. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, patronized fifth graduation ceremony of Bahrain Technical College, Bahrain Polytechnic, which was held at Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Hall at the University of Bahrain. His Highness expressed happiness for the achievements of the college, which contributes to achieving the goals of the development of education in initiatives in accordance with the government action plan and Bahrain's vision 2030. He noted that the college developed in the past 10 years a system that links their educational programs to the labor needs of the market in cooperation with companies, institutions and entrepreneurs contributing to the formation of human capital which is a pillar of the labor market that needs scientific and practical capabilities and skills in the field of entrepreneurship. His Highness affirmed that the attention the college receives comes within the framework of the development of the education project and its initiatives, which comes within the comprehensive development march of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's reform project. With the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness expressed thanks for the Chairman and members of the Board of Trustees of the college and the executive chairman and the academic and administrative bodies for their efforts, which contributed to the achievement of excellence and congratulated the graduates wishing them success. His Highness then distributed certificates to the batch of graduates of 160 graduates who completed the requirements of graduation in various majors.
The BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Khalifa inspected the conclusion of National Fortitude Joint Command exercise. The exercise was conducted by the BDF with the participation of the National Guard and the Interior Ministry. This coordination aimed at refining both combat and administrative experiences and improving practical leadership concepts. The Commander in Chief stated that the National Fortitude exercise comes within the framework of joint military cooperation to ask assess the speed and level of leadership and operational response. The President of the National Guard, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, met Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan in Islamabad and discussed ways of developing relations binding the two friendly countries and peoples. The National Guard President presented a letter from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa to the Pakistani Premier, inviting him to visit Bahrain. The Pakistani Premier hailed Bahrain's development strides, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, loading the government great efforts. He commended joint cooperation between the two countries in international arenas for the sake of mutual interests and the Islamic nation. General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed thanked Prime Minister Imran Khan for the gracious welcome and kind hospitality, wishing Pakistan and its friendly people further progress, prosperity, security and stability. Also present were Bahrain's ambassador to Pakistan, Mohammed Ibrahim Mohammed, and National Guard President's Office Director Brigadier Abdul Rahman Rashid Al Saad. National Guard President His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa on the sidelines of his visit to Pakistan met Pakistan's Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee General Zubair Mahmoud Hayat and discussed cooperation relations and topics of joint interest chiefly at military level. The Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee Chairman welcomed the National Guard Commander's visit that aimed at developing the Bahraini-Pakistani military relations. The National Guard Commander praised the level of military cooperation between the two sides and the Pakistani forces role in promoting security and stability in the region.
President of the National Guard, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, met Pakistan Armed Forces Commander General Qamar Javed Bajwa in his office at the Pakistani Armed Forces General Command HQs in Rawalpindi. The Pakistani Army Commander praised the deep rooted friendship and cooperation ties and reaffirmed his country's keenness on boosting the cooperation in various fields in the interest of both friendly countries and peoples. His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed expressed gratitude and appreciation to the Pakistani commander for his keenness on consolidating cooperation between the two countries and commended the Pakistani armed forces advanced in all fields, wished Pakistan more progress and prosperity. His Highness reaffirmed Bahrain's aspiration to further bolstering the cooperation to achieve the shared interests. The two sides explored the ongoing cooperation in various fields between the National Guard and the Pakistani armed forces. The Council of Representatives Speaker Fawziya bint Abdullah Zainal highlighted the outstanding relations between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates in light of the efforts and interest of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa and Head of UAE's Women Federation, the Supreme Chairperson of the Family Development Foundation and President of the Motherhood and Childhood Supreme Council, Her Highness Sheikha Fatima bint Mubarak, Presenting a great example of bilateral work which achieved the success and empowerment of women in all development fields of both countries. She noted that relations and joint cooperation between the two countries, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, affirms the depth of bilateral relations and the common goal of both countries and peoples. Under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the signing ceremony of a Saudi export financing agreement was held for the oil and gas holding company to fund oil and gas projects in Bahrain with a value of 300 million US dollars. The agreement comes within the framework of joint work between the government of Bahrain and the Saudi Fund for Development SFD. The oil and gas holding company CEO Adhafar Al Jalahma was delegated to sign the agreement. It was also signed by SFD Vice President Dr. Khaled bin Sulaiman Al Khudairi in the presence of Bahrain's Ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Saudi Arabia's Ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Al Sheikh, the Vice President of the National Industrial Committee of the Council of Saudi Chambers, Dr. Abdul Rahman Al Ubaid, and a number of officials. The Minister of Oil said that the National Oil and Gas Authority and the companies under its umbrella are all always striving to develop the oil, gas and petrochemical industry. He hailed the efforts of the oil companies affiliated to the authority, which resulted in the establishment of many oil projects, including the Bahrain Refinery Modernization Project. Head of the Daqiyim Program Committee, Information and E-Government Authority Chief Executive Muhammad Ali Al-Qaid congratulated the government sectors who achieved the gold category within the program. He noted that the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al-Khalifa has contributed to accelerating the implementation of modern concepts in government work, stressing that the program has contributed to a shift in the public sector culture. He noted that His Royal Highness's directive to form a committee specialized in evaluating government service centers comes within a clear vision that aims to support creativity and excellency to increase the efficiency of services and their development in order to achieve the satisfaction of the customers both citizens and residents he praised the efforts of the members of the committee and evaluation and administrative teams which contributed to the creation and development of government centers in accordance with the international standards by holding dozens of workshops and training employees.
The Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister OFDPM announces that application for the fifth edition of the OFDPM Fellowship is now open. Government employees below managerial level can apply via the OFDPM's website. The application deadline is Thursday, April 18, 2019. The Director General of the OFDPM, Sheikh Fahad bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa, affirmed that the fellowship, which continues to receive the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa aims to improve public sector efficiency through the advancement of employees' skill set. He affirmed that the fellowship continues to meet its core objective by providing advanced training and research methods and policy analysis, as well as providing the fellows with the opportunity to interact with senior government officials. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa regarding the immediate delivery of the East Hit Town housing units to beneficiaries and within the framework of the implementation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa directives to distribute 5,000 housing units. The Department of Housing Projects in the Ministry of Housing began distributing the units of Bushaheen District in East Hit Town. The Assistant Under Secretary for Housing Projects, Engineer Sami Abdullah Buhaza, and the Director of Construction and Maintenance of Housing Projects, Engineer Hussein Al Omari, began the procedures of distributing housing units to beneficiaries. Engineer Sami Abdullah stated that the Ministry has been keen during the past few days to ensure the completion of all units and to review the insurance contracts within the contractors to ensure the delivery of high quality housing services to citizens. The Assistant Under Secretary for Housing Projects added that the procedures for distributing housing units to citizens come only a few days after the completion of the procedures for distributing contracts to citizens and the completion of documentation, procedures and the opening of bank accounts in the housing bank. The Information and E-Government Authority announced the beginning of the judging process of the participating works in the E-Government Excellence Award 2019, held in its 10th edition under the patronage of the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Committee of Information and Communications Technology, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, in order to achieve and ensure the success of the evaluation process. The independence and diversity of the specialties of the jury members were taken into account which will increase the level of technical initiatives in all sectors and enhance the competition between creative ideas that keep pace with the information technology era. The National Bureau for Revenue, NBR, held an interactive workshop primarily aimed at increasing the VAT awareness of professionals working in the construction sector. The workshop attracted 85 representatives and 54 from 54 enterprises and recapped general and technical VAT concepts, including VAT record keeping. Following the workshop, attendees visited the unique interactive demo center that provides innovative learning experiences to assist vendors in implementing that. Today's workshop is a continuation of the series of workshops organized by the NBR to provide an inclusive platform for all stakeholders from the public and private sectors to ensure the smooth registration of companies within an annual supply of 500,000 Bahraini dinars to 5, 5 million Bahraini dinars by June. Saudi Arabia reinforced its determination to confront extremism and hate speech in the wake of Friday's terrorist attack on two mosques in New Zealand, which left 50 people dead. During its weekly meeting chaired by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the cabinet called on the international community to take a tough stance against those who tried to spread hate, extremism and violence. The cabinet expressed its deepest condolences to the families of those killed in the Christchurch attack and also the people and government of New Zealand. 
U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said today that U.S. is seeking new efforts from countries in the Middle East to address regional security issues whilst reaffirming U.S. commitment to Kuwaiti security. Speaking in Kuwait City during a stop there on a visit to the region, Pompeo also said U.S. partnership with the members of the Gulf Cooperation Council are critical in defeating the Daesh terrorist group and creating the unified front against Iran. He urged progress on creating the Middle East Strategic Alliance, which would join GCC militaries with those of Egypt and Jordan to serve as a counterbalance to Iran, which they accuse of fomenting unrest and rebellion throughout the region. On security, I'll repeat what I said during my recent speech in Cairo and at the War Stop Ministerial last month. The United States is seeking vigorous new efforts from all countries in the region to address the security challenges of our time. These challenges include defeating terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda for sure. Kuwait is a strong partner towards that goal. And the agreements we are signing today affirm Kuwait's commitment. Four Iran-allied Houthi militants were killed when landmines they planted detonated in an area west of Taiz. Yemen's National Army targeted militants who were planting landmines in al dabab front in Taiz, killing two of their leaders. Meanwhile, Yemen's Information Minister Muammar al ariani said the military failure to comply with international agreements set up to aid the move towards a peaceful outcome showed their reluctance to accept peaceful solutions. He added that the only solution in Yemen is to free the areas from the Houthis who do not honor pacts. A senior U.S. arms control official said Iran's missile program is destabilizing the Middle East and increasing the risk of a regional arms race. Assistant Secretary of State for Arms Control, Verification and Compliance Yilin Poblet told the U.N.-sponsored conference on disarmament that Washington would aggressively counter Iran's regional proliferation of ballistic missiles and its unlawful arms transfers. She urged all responsible countries to enforce the U.N. Security Council resolution restricting the transfer of missile-related technologies to Iran. Two Palestinians were killed by Israeli occupation forces in clashes near a flashpoint religious site in the occupied West Bank overnight. The health ministry said Raid Hamdan, aged 21, and Zaid Nouri, aged 20, died after being shot last night by Israeli troops near the Joseph Tombs religious site close to the Palestinian city of Nablus. The Israeli army claimed explosives were hurled as Jewish worshippers who visited the site. It said troops opening fire on the assailants following confrontations. U.S.-backed Syrian forces seized control of an encampment held by the Daesh terrorist group in eastern Syria after hundreds of militants surrendered overnight after months of stiff resistance. A group of suspects involved in a January bombing that killed four Americans in northern Syria were among militants captured by the Kurdish-led forces. The taking of the militant camp was a major advance, but not the final defeat of the group in Barouz, the last village held by the extremists where they have been holding out for weeks under siege. The commander of Syrian Democratic Forces said about 1,000 mercenaries refused to surrender to the forces and battles continue at the last points in al Barouz Mount. Relatives of those killed in last week's shootings at two mosques in New Zealand began to bury the dead today as the country's Prime Minister renewed her call to remember the 50 victims rather than the terrorists accused of slaughtering them. Hundreds of people gathered at a grave designated for Muslim burials. While many of victims will be buried there, some are being brought back to their home countries. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said she would do everything possible to ensure that the gunman was denied any chance to lift his profile. She promised to build a future with fewer guns by moving swiftly to tighten the nation's gun laws and potentially ban semi-automatic weapons. 
The Speaker of Kazakhstan's parliament was sworn as interim president today, a day after longtime leader Nur Sultan Nazarbayev abruptly resigned. Nazarbayev surprisingly had many by announcing in t televised address that he would step down after nearly 30 years in office, making Qasem Domar Tokayev only the second president in the country's independent history. Nazarbayev attended Tokayev's inauguration during which he praised Nazarbayev as an outstanding reformer. He has been widely praised for maintaining stability and ethnic peace in Kazakhstan, a large oil-rich nation south of Russia and west of China. British Prime Minister Theresa May will ask the European Union to delay Brexit by at least three months after her plan to hold another vote this week was thrown into disarray by a surprise intervention from the Speaker of Parliament. Nearly three years after Britain voted to leave the EU, its departure is uncertain and European capitals are pressing May to spell out her next moves. Possible eventual outcomes still range from a long postponement, leaving May with a deal. A disruptive exit without a deal or even another referendum. Other EU member states were discussing two main options, a delay of two or three months if May persuades them she can clinch a deal at home or much longer if May accepts that radical reworking is needed.